This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, visit LibriVox.org. Beowulf Translated by Francis Barton Gamir Section 7 That way he went with no will of his own, in danger of life, to the dragon's hoard. But for pressure of peril, some prince's thane. He fled in fear the fatal scourge, seeking shelter, a sinful man, and entered in. At the awful sight tottered that guest, and terror seized him. Yet the wretched fugitive rallied anon from fright and fear, ere he fled away, and took the cup from that treasure hoard. Of such, besides, there was store enough, heirlooms old, the earth below, which some earl forgotten in ancient years, left the last of his lofty race, heedfully there had hidden away dearest treasure. For death of yore had hurried all hence, and he alone left to live the last of the clan, weeping his friends, yet wished to bide warding the treasure, his one delight, though brief his respite. The barrow, new ready, to strand and sea waves stood anear, hard by the headland, hidden and closed. There laid within it his lordly heirlooms, and heaped hoard of heavy gold that warden of rings. Few words he spake. Now hold thou earth, since heroes may not, what earls have owned. Lo, erst from thee brave men brought it, but battle-death seized, and cruel killing my clansmen all, Robbed them of life and a liegeman's joys. None have I left to lift the sword, Or to cleanse the carven cup of price, beaker bright. My brave are gone, and the helmet hard, All haughty with gold, shall part from its plating. Polishers sleep who could brighten and burnish the battle-mask, And those weeds of war that were wont to brave over bicker of shields, The bite of steel rust with their bearer. The ringed mail fares not far with famous chieftain at side of hero. No harp's delight, no glee-wood's gladness, no good hawk now flies through the hall, Nor horses fleet stamp in the burgstead. Battle and death, the flower of my race, Have reft away. Mournful of mood, thus he moaned his woe, Alone for them all, and unblithe wept By day and by night, Till death's fell wave o'erwhelmed his heart. His hoard of bliss, that old ill-doer open found, Who, blazing at twilight, the barrows haunteth. Naked foe-dragon, flying by night, folded in fire. The folk of earth dread him sore. Tis his doom to seek hoard in the graves, and heathen gold to watch many wintered, nor wins he thereby. Powerful this plague of the people, thus held the house of the hoard in earth three hundred winters, till one aroused wrath in his breast, to the ruler bearing that costly cup, and the king implored for bond of peace. So the barrow was plundered, borne off was booty. His boon was granted, that wretched man, And his ruler saw, first time, What was fashioned in far-off days. 
When the dragon awoke, new woe was kindled. O'er the stone he snuffed, the stark heart found footprint of foe, who so far had gone in his hidden craft by the creature's head. So may the undoomed easily flee evils and exile, if only he gain the grace of the wielder. That warden of gold, o'er the ground went seeking, greedy to find the man who wrought him such wrong in sleep, savage and burning, the barrow he circled all without, nor was any there, none in the waste. Yet war he desired, was eager for battle. The barrow he entered, sought the cup, and discovered soon that some one of the mortals had searched his treasure, his lordly gold. The guardian waited, ill-enduring, till evening came. Boiling with wrath was the barrow's keeper, and fain with flame the foe to pay for the dear cup's loss. Now day was fled, as the worm had wished. By its wall no more was it glad to bide, but burning flew folded in flame, a fearful beginning for sons of the soil, and soon it came, in the doom of their lord, to a dreadful end. Then the baleful fiend its fire belched out, and bright homes burned. The blaze stood high, all landsfolk frighting. No living thing would that loathly one leave, as aloft it flew. Wide was the dragon's warring seen, its fiendish fury far and near, as the grim destroyer, those gatish people hated and hounded. To hidden lair, to its hoard it hastened at hint of dawn. Folk of the land it had lapped in flame with bale and brand. In its barrow it trusted, its battling and bulwarks. That boast was vain. To Beowulf, then, the bale was told quickly and truly. The king's own home, of buildings the best, in brand waves melted, the gift throne of gates. To the good old man, sad in heart, t'was heaviest sorrow. The sage assumed that his sovereign god he had angered, breaking ancient law, and embittered the Lord. His breast within with black thoughts welled, as his want was never. The folk's own fastness, that fiery dragon with flame had destroyed, and the stronghold all washed by waves. But the warlike king, prince of the waiters, plotted vengeance. Warrior's bulwark, he bade them work all of iron, the earl's commander, a war-shield wondrous. Well he knew that forest wood against fire were worthless. Linden could aid not. A thelling brave, he was fated to finish this fleeting life, his days on earth, and the dragon with him, though long it had watched o'er the wealth of the horde. Shame, he reckoned, sharer of rings, to follow the flyer afar with a host, a broad-flung band. Nor the battle feared he, nor deemed he dreadful the dragon's warring, its vigor and valor. Ventures desperate he had passed a plenty, and perils of war, contest crash, since, conqueror proud, Rothgar's hall he had wholly purged, and in grapple had killed the kin of Grendel, loathsome breed. Not least was that of hand-to-hand -hand fights with Hegelach fell, when the ruler of Gates, in rush of battle, 
Lord of his folk in the Frisian land, Son of Rethel, by sword draughts died, By brands down beaten. Thence Beowulf fled, through strength of himself and his swimming power, though alone, and his arms were laden with thirty coats of mail, when he came to the sea. Nor yet might Hetwaris haughtily boast their craft of contest, who carried against him shields to the fight. But few escaped from strife with the hero to their homes. Then swam over ocean Ecthiao's son, lonely and sorrowful, seeking his land, where Hyged made him offer of hoard and realm, rings and royal seat, reckoning not the strength of her son to save their kingdom from hostile hordes after Hygelac's death. No sooner for this could the stricken ones in any wise move that atheling's mind over young Herdred's head as lord and ruler of all the realm to be. Yet the hero upheld him with helpful words, aided in honor, till, older grown, he wielded the wetter geats. Wandering exiles sought him o'er the seas, the sons of Oter, who had spurned the sway of the Skilfing's helmet, the bravest and best that broke the rings in Swedish land, of the sea-king's line, haughty hero. Hence Herdred's end. For shelter he gave them, sword-death came, the blades fell blow to bairn of Hygelac. But the son of Agenthiao sought again house and home when Herdred fell, leaving Beowulf lord of gates and gift seats master, a good king he. The fall of his lord he was fain to requite in after days, and to Edgils he proved friend to the friendless, and forces sent over the sea to the son of Oter, weapons and warriors. Well repaid he those care paths cold when the king he slew. Thus, safe through struggles, the son of Ecthiao had passed a plenty through perils dire with daring deeds, till this day was come that doomed him now with the dragons to strive. With comrades eleven, the lord of gates, swollen in rage, went seeking the dragon. He had heard whence all the harm arose, and the killing of clansmen. That cup of price on the lap of the lord had been laid by the finder. In the throng was this one thirteenth man starter of all the strife and ill, care-laden captive, cringing thence, forced and reluctant, he led them on till he came in ken of that cavern hall. The barrow delved near billowy surges, flood of ocean. Within, t'was full of wire-gold and jewels, a jealous warden, Warrior trusty, the treasures held, lurked in his lair. Nor light the task of entrance for any of the earth-born men. Sat on the headland the hero king, spake words of hail to his hearth companions, gold friend of gates. All gloomy his soul, wavering, death-bound. Weird, full nigh ready stood to greet the gray-haired man, to seize his soul hoard, sunder apart life and body. Not long would be the warrior spirit, enwound with flesh. Beowulf spake, the bairn of Ecthiao. Through store of struggles, I strove in youth, mighty feuds, 
I mind them all. I was seven years old when the sovereign of rings, friend of his folk, from my father took me, had me, and held me. Rethel the king, with food and fee, faithful in kinship. Ne'er while I lived there, he loathlier found me, barren in the burg, than his birthright sons, Herbeld and Hasenth and Higelac mine. For the eldest of these, by unmeet chance, by kinsman's deed, was the deathbed strewn, when Hyacinth killed him with horny bow. His own dear liege laid low with an arrow, missed the mark, and his mate shot down, one brother the other, with bloody shaft. A feeless fight, and a fearful sin, horror to Rethel. Yet, hard as it was, unavenged must the Atheling die. Too awful it is for an aged man to bide and bear that his bairn so young rides on the gallows. A rhyme he makes, sorrow song for his son there hanging as rapture of ravens. No rescue now can come from the old disabled man. Still is he minded, as his morning breaks, of the air gone elsewhere. Another he hopes not he will bide to see his burg within, as ward for his wealth, now the one has found doom of death that the deed incurred. Forlorn he looks on the lodge of his son, wine hall, waste, and wind-swept chambers reft of revel. The rider sleepeth, the hero far hidden. No harp resounds, in the courts no wassail, as once was heard. Then he goes to his chamber, a grief-song chants alone for his lost. Too large all seems, homestead and house. So the helmet of wedders hid in his heart for Herabild waves of woe. No way could he take to avenge on the slayer slaughter so foul. Nor e'en could he harass that hero at all with loathing deed, though he loved him not. And so, for the sorrow his soul endured, men's gladness he gave up, and God's light chose. Lands and cities he left his sons, as the wealthy do, when he went from earth. There was strife and struggle twixt Swede and Gate over the width of waters. War arose. Hard battle horror, when Rethel died, and Ongenthau's offspring grew strife king, bold nor brooked o'er the seas, pact of peace, but pushed their boats to harass in hatred Rosnaborth. Men of my folk for that feud had vengeance, for woeful war tis widely known, though one of them bought it with blood of his own heart, a bargain hard, for Hethson proved fatal that fray for the first of gates. At morn, I heard, was the murderer killed by kinsman for kinsman, with clash of sword, when Ongenthau met Eofor there. Wide split the war-helm, wan he fell hoary skilfing. The hand that smote him of feud was mindful, nor flinched from the death-blow. For all that he gave me, my gleaming sword repaid him at war. Such power I wielded for lordly treasure. With land he entrusted me, homestead and house. He had no need from Swedish realm, or from spear-dane folk, 
or from the men of gifts. To get him help. Some warrior worse for wage to buy. Ever I fought in the front of all, soul to the fore, and so shall I fight while I bide in life, and this blade shall last that early and late hath loyal proved since for my doughtiness Dacfrin fell. Slain by my hand, the Hugus champion, nor fared he thence to the Frisian king with the booty back and breast adornments, but slain in struggle that standard bearer fell, Aethling brave. Not with blade was he slain, but his bones were broken by brawny gripe, his heart waves stifled. The sword edge now, hard blade and my hand, for the horde shall strive. Beowulf spake, and a battle vow made his last of all. I have lived through many wars in my youth. Now, once again, old folk defender, feud will I seek, do doughty deeds, if the dark destroyer forth from his cavern come to fight me. Then hailed he the helmeted heroes all, for the last time greeting his liegemen dear, comrades of war. I should carry no weapon, nor sword to the serpent, if sure I knew how, with such enemy, else my vows I could gain as I did in Grendel's day. But fire in this fight I must fear me now, and poisonous breath, so I bring with me breastplate and board. From the barrel's keeper no foot-breadth flee I. One fight shall end our war by the wall, as weird a lots, all mankind's master. My mood is bold, but forbears to boast o'er this battling flyer. Now, Abide by the barrow, ye breastplate mailed, ye heroes in harness. Which of us twain better from the battle rush bear his wounds? Wait ye the finish. The fight is not yours, nor meet for any but me alone, to measure might with this monster here and play the hero. Heartily I shall win that wealth, or war shall seize, cruel killing, your king and lord. Up stood then with shield the sturdy champion, stayed by the strength of his single manhood, and hardy neath helmet his harness bore, under cleft of the cliffs, no coward's path. Soon spied by the wall that warrior chief, Survivor of many a victory field, Where foemen fought with furious clashings In arch of stone, And, within, a stream that broke from the barrel. The brooklet's wave was hot with fire. The hoard that way he never could hope unharmed to near, Or endure those deeps, For the dragon's flame. Then let from his breast, for he burst with rage, The waiter gate prints a word outgo. Stormed the stark heart, stern went ringing and clear His cry neath the cliff rocks gray. The horde guard heard a human voice, His rage was enkindled. No respite now for pact of peace. The poison breath of that foul worm First came forth from the cave, Hot reek of fight. The rocks resounded. Stout by the stone way his shield he raised, Lord of the gates, Against the loathed one. While with courage keen that coiled foe Came seeking strife. 
the sturdy king had drawn his sword, not dull of edge, heirloom old, and each of the two felt fear of his foe, though fierce their mood. Stoutly stood with his shield high raised, the warrior king, as the worm now coiled together a mane. The mailed one waited. Now, spire by spire, fast sped and glided that blazing serpent. The shield protected, soul and body a shorter while, for the hero king than his heart desired. Could his will have wielded the welcome respite but once in his life? But Weird denied it, and victory's honors. His arm he lifted, lord of the gates, the grim foe smote with Aethling's heirloom. Its edge was turned brown blade on the bone, and bit more feebly than its noble master had need of then, in his baleful stress. Then the barrow's keeper waxed full wild for that weighty blow, cast deadly flames, wide drove in far those vicious fires. No victor's glory, the gate's lord boasted, his brand had failed, naked in battle, as never it should, excellent iron. "'Twas no easy path that Ecthiao's honoured heir must tread o'er the plain to the place of the foe, for against his will he must win a home elsewhere far, as must all men, leaving this lapsing life. Not long it was ere those champions grimly closed again. The horde guard was heartened, high heaved his breast once more, and by peril was pressed again, enfolded in flames, the folk commander. Nor yet about him his bands of comrades, son of Aethlings, armed stood with warlike front. To the woods they bent them, their lives to save, but the soul of one with care was cumbered. Kinship true can never be marred. IN A NOBLE MIND. Wigliffe his name was, Wellston's son, Linden Thane loved, the lord of Skilfings, Elfer's kinsman. His king he now saw with heat, under helmet, hard oppressed. He minded the prizes his prince had given him, wealthy seat of Wigdemine's line, and folk rights that his father owned, not long he lingered. The linden yellow, his shield, he seized. The old sword he drew, as heirloom of Eanmund, earth-dwellers knew it, who was slain by the sword Edge, son of Oter. Friendless exiled, erst in fray, killed by Wilston, who won for his kin, Brown bright helmet, breastplate ringed, Old sword of Jotun's, Onela's gift, Weeds of war of the warrior's thane. Battle gear brave, Though a brother's child had been felled, The feud was unfelt by Onela. For winters this war gear Wailston kept, Breastplate and board, till his bairn had grown earlship to earn as the old sire did. Then he gave him, mid gates, the gear of battle, portion huge, when he passed from life, fared aged forth. For the first time now, with his leader lord, the liegeman young was bidden to share the shock of battle. Neither softened his soul, nor the sire's bequest weakened in war. So the worm found out when once in fight the foes had met. Wiglaf spake, and his words were sage, sad in spirit. He said to his comrades, 
I remember the time when mead we took, what promise we made to this prince of ours in the banquet hall, to our breaker of rings. For gear of combat to him give requital. For hard sword and helmet, if hap should bring stress of this sort. Himself who chose us from all his army to aid him now, urged us to glory, and gave these treasures. Because he counted us keen with the spear and hardy neath helm, though this hero work our leader hoped unhelped and alone to finish for us. Folk defender, who hath got him glory greater than all men for daring deeds. Now the day is come that our noble master has need of the might of warriors stout. Let us stride along the hero to help, while the heat is about him glowing and grim. For God is my witness, I am far more fain the fire should seize along with my lord these limbs of mine. Unsuiting it seems our shields to bear homeward hence, save here we essay to fell the foe and defend the life of the wedder's lord. I wot twere shame on the law of our land if alone the king out of gatish warriors woe endured and sank in the struggle. My sword and helmet, breastplate and board, for us both shall serve. Through slaughter reek strode he to succor his chieftain. His battle helm bore, and brief words spake. Beowulf, dearest, do all bravely, as in youthful days of yore thou vowedst, that while life should last thou wouldst let no wise thy glory droop. Now, great in deeds, Aetheling steadfast, with all thy strength, shield thy life. I will stand to help thee. At the words the worm came once again. Murderous monster mad with rage, with fire billows flaming, its foes to seek, the hated men. In heat waves burned that board to the boss, and the breastplate failed to shelter at all the spear thane young. Yet quickly under his kinsman's shield went eager the earl, since his own was now all burned by the blaze. The bold king again had mind of his glory. With might his glaive was driven into the dragon's head, blow nerved by hate. But Nagling was shivered, broken in battle was Beowulf's sword, old and gray. Twas granted him not that ever the edge of iron at all could help him at strife. Too strong was his hand, so the tale is told, and he tried too far with strength of stroke all swords he wielded, though sturdy their steel. They steaded him not. Then for the third time thought on its feud that folk destroyer, fire dread dragon, and rushed on the hero, where room allowed, battle grim, burning, its bitter teeth closed on his neck, and covered him with waves of blood from his breast that welled. End of Section 7 Read by Dennis Sayers in Modesto, California for LibriVox Fall 2006